uh, I've got some people here with a team of horses. Look like some settlers and they're wondering where they can park them. July 29th. It's the opening day of the Argyle Homecoming Weekend. People have come from all over Canada to celebrate with family and old friends and to remember the hardy Scots and the Métis who began breaking this land in the 1870s. Frank and Alana and Tim and Deanna are the special guests of the community. It's their first trip to town. For the people of Argyle, the pioneers are a living reminder of the spirit that put this place on the map. you the people who are pioneering in Argyle and they're going to make Argyle famous. You'll get used to it. You'll get used to it. Living like a settler, you'll get used to it. Mosquitoes, mud and more. A tent without a floor. Two couples, one young, one gray. To live in Argyle in the old-fashioned way, it's wonderful, it's marvelous. No debt, no bills, no worries for a year. But when you get used to it, and you're really used to it, you just move in, and then the year will end. Oh, really? I'm a Copeland. <laughs> oh, my word. Well, Tim discovers a living link to the homestead. Gladys Elliott has arrived with a photo album and her memories of a childhood spent on the same land Tim and Frank have been plowing. It's common ground for these pioneers from different generations. Here, let's see those deers. Let's see those deers. <laughs> They're oh, real that is, that is so <laughs> neat. Community is important to the Treadways. In the past weeks, they've really missed going to church. Probably the most important thing in my life is my relationship with God. And uh, we've been isolated out on in our little tent and our little prairie over there. And... Uh, I've certainly missed just being able to worship God with other people. But the Logies are looking for something different. Faith is important to them too, but they're idealists who've signed on for a true experience of pioneer life in the 1870s. They discover that a trip to the Argyle homecoming means stepping back into the 21st century. Just so many people here that, they're all happy for us, but it's just that many people come up and, and talk to you and take your picture and everything and it's really... I said it felt like our wedding again. <laughs> yeah, I said and smiled <laughs> so many times for like. the photos. I couldn't do it anymore, so... <laughs> everyone's amazing and everyone, the hardest part probably too of the day was saying, everyone said, can we come visit and can you accept it? Can we make you a pie? Can we make you down? We're like, no! We, we love you, you too, but and you're yeah. wonderful, but we can't. Like, th we, we would be eating full course meals. One of the reasons they're so supportive is most of their relatives in the area did this. So to them, it's really great to see that people have an interest in stuff that they did. Well, Dad actually cleared all the land, took all the, the trees out and stumps and everything else. And the last one he cleared was over on the other side, the other one over there. He was only... A Gladys Elliott takes Tim and Deanna to a meadow near their homestead, back to the original site of her family's pioneer farmyard. Right in here. See, that's the side there, and there was a big haystack in there, and then so he that had... that would be right behind this? Right, yeah, this right in that here? area there, yeah. Facing, Facing the, road. the road. That's right. There it is right there. We were a loving family, very close, because when you go through things together and you have a few hardships, and that's good for you. Hard work that brings you together. Absolutely. And I think that's what Tim and I are realizing, yeah, that hard that's work. Right. Yeah. So the house was right in here. And, and there was a garden down in there. And I used to play down in there 
and with my carriage and my dolls and pretend all those trees were my friends. I didn't have anybody to play with. So that was fun, yeah. And then the back of the house. Is that the outhouse back there? Uh, well, there was one there. Oh, for God's sake. So I've sat in that one lots of times. <laughs> <laughs> See, it was only a one-seater. Uh, sure. Oh, my God. And the Eaton's catalog was always in there. <laughs> At this old farm site, Tim hears a whisper of encouragement from Gladys's father, who labored over these timbers 80 years ago. I mean, this is exactly what we're doing. Is that right? Exactly. We've got our barn that uh, we've got it about this high, yeah. and it looks just like this. No kidding. Yeah. God bless you too, and we thank you for every day. You were an inspiration to us. Oh, thank you. Yes, and Good. Uh, bringing us down the memory lane. And, thank you. Uh, if your mom can do it, I can do it. You <laughs> can, you can. And you know, first thing you know, uh, you'll be old like we are. <laughs> the pioneers return to the daily grind. There's a house to build with a few primitive tools. Tim has found a way of leveling this old-style log foundation. We've got uh, a little bit of water in a cooking pan. So we just put the one side on the string and then just check to see how much water is on each side. And we're a little bit low on that end. So we'll lift it up a little bit and then just check it for there. Then we can dig the logs down and, and uh, have it so that the house is relatively level. Tim and Deanna's house will be bigger than Frank and Alana's. It'll have a kitchen and a cook stove, which the two couples will share. It's going up fast. But living and working together day after day is taking its toll. Most people at most job sites would agree that if it wasn't for people, the job would be a lot easier. Relationships are probably the hardest thing of any, any job any part of life and past uh, week has been a frustrating week frustrating in relationships how do you think we're doing how are you getting along as a foursome honest well you notice there is some hesitation I think we're getting along. I think we have problems sometimes. You know, we don't always agree with everything. You know, but I think we get along as well as, you know, it's, it's as two couples can who don't know each other and are just thrown into this, you know. I think we get along really good for that. There's been a tension for the past week and uh, I don't know what's bothering her. And we can only surmise that it's something about us, that, or about one of us. Do you have any idea why it might be? Um, there well, have been things that we, we have talked about recently that we have agreed to disagree. Like what? Um, just issues. And... Uh, um, be specific, I think. If you want. No, I don't want to, really. It's not important. Um, but just the past few days, there's been, they have... Mm, well, the past something. week, past fiscal week. Just wanted to, I wanted to know... Alana returns, but also, the problems won't go Canada, away. Tim and Deanna want other people like around. Food. Frank and Alana like to be alone. There's tension over how pioneer life should be lived, and everyone's exhausted by the conflict. That was my other big frustration today. I feel like I've had it with the fact that there's constantly people in here. And they're great people. They're all really nice and they're neighbors, which they are allowed to come. But too often and more and more they're bringing us things. It started off once in a while they bring us jam and once in a while they bring a loaf of bread. And then they'd see we wouldn't have a lot of foods. They started bringing over more stuff. You know, we'd never garden, so they'd bring us a little bit of lettuce. And now it's just gotten to the point where it's not appropriate. And I'm just feeling frustrated because they're so nice and you don't want to say, you know, go take all that home. You don't want to offend them. And um, so we kind of had a talk today and decided we are going to start saying something to them. But it is frustrating because Tim and Deanna like to be social and want people around. Um, 
we, the whole idea we wanted to come out here is we wanted to experience the isolation and neither of us have felt more unisolated in, the, in our whole life. Like Frank and I said, we don't have to see people this often when we're at home. <laughs> All four pioneers have made friends in the Hutterite colony just down the road. Here we have our neighbors who have come to help us peel logs. And the fellow in the back there is taking out a stump. That's David. The colony is a farming commune of about 100 people, bound together by faith, generosity, and centuries of history. The Hutterites have especially been a salvation for Tim and Deanna, who've encouraged them to visit the homestead and experience their pioneer work. This is Joyce here, who's whitewashing our ceiling. Meanwhile, the Hutterites have invited the Treadways to church on the colony, and even switched the services from Low German to English to make them feel welcome. You need other people in life mm -hmm. um, that you can talk to, um, because we have to work together, we eat together, we cook together. You're so focused together that you need, you need an, uh, um, an outlet. And these Hutterites have been wonderful to us. Um, they've kind of, uh, in a sense, maybe replaced our family. We had to leave behind our boys, and it's just been wonderful having young kids around. For us, it's been a real blessing. The Hutterites have purple beans, too, eh? The bright purple string beans. What? Huh? And they said when you boil them, they turn green and use them for salads. Um, Deanna and I went and picked beans and cucumbers with the Hutterites on Monday. They asked us if this Monday we would come help them in their vegetable garden. So we had a lot of fun, and um, of course we came back with some beans, which was nice. So we're just canning them. We did seven jars yesterday, and it took us two hours to get the canning pot to boil. And then it takes, we want to do it for three hours just to be safe, because we're worried about botulism. So really it took five hours of just trying to keep the stove going. How are things going, you guys? Pretty good. Yeah. A lot better than last week. Frank and I talked, and I think it's a good. It was good after we talked to you, and we just kind of said we gotta relax about certain stuff and just not try care. Not, yeah, try not care. So I try not to care, <laughs> and it's helping. I so badly want to live exactly like a settler, and I don't know if it's harder than I thought or it's just not as possible in the year 2000. Um, in little things, like for example, the Hutterites came and helped us on Saturday dig the well, and so then in exchange we went and helped them on Monday to pick vegetables. And then I thought later, if we would have had rain here for a month straight, our neighbors would have too and they wouldn't have had beans to give us. Um, so I, I struggle with that a lot inside. I wanted the hardships a little more. I mean, it's more difficult in some ways. We have E. coli in our well and a settler wouldn't have experienced that. They wouldn't be struggling with their year 2000 plots and dreaming of year 2000 food. So some things are harder here than they would have had, but some things are also a lot easier. But I think that's just part of trying to do it now. Frank and Alana came here hoping for a picture-perfect pioneer experience. But in small ways, the 21st century is interfering with that dream. An example is their second well. Modern-day tests show it's contaminated with E. coli, and so are other wells all around the district. The first pioneers would have had no choice. They would have used this water. Some would have died. But that's avoidable today. The pioneers are able to draw their drinking water from a neighbor's well that's tested safe. So we're just having the same problem everyone else is. No one right now has good water. Most people are either boiling or drinking bottled water, so it's uh, making it a lot more difficult for us. What do you got there, Frank? Two mice, dead mice in the well. We find that all the time. It's one of the reasons we have to crib. They, I don't know, they crawl in to take a drink and they just fall in there. We have a ton of frogs a lot of times too, but the mice are the things you really don't like finding dead in your well. The houses are a happier story. The two log cabins are authentic and a welcome source of some settler pride. Because we really like it bright, we're going to be whitewashing the ceiling boards so that uh, it'll be brighter in there, especially in winter when the days are short. And also it is a retardant for uh, mold. And these boards are very damp. Uh, they, I don't think they're stone dried. I think they're just cut, sawed and given to us. It's easy to forget the pioneers are working with just a few antique tools, some rough lumber, and the poplar logs they dragged out of the bush. 
The design and construction are the genius of Tim Treadway, who makes it look easy when it isn't. The swelling of the, of the wood is quite interesting to deal with all the time. The, uh, we had a rainstorm yesterday or something like that, and, and uh, I had a, a hole in the floor for our fridge, which was only three boards, and I had about a quarter of an inch space. And after the rainstorm, we, uh, we couldn't get the boards back in. So we're going to be contending with that all the time, and then we're going to be contending with a lot of spaces when they dry out, and uh, we're just going to have to let our floors go dirty and fill the cracks, I guess. Seems like the work never stops. Yeah. You know, I've thought about that, and especially, you know, I mean, we don't have children here, but if we had children here too, kids, and having to do the wash for them, I mean, it's just a full-time job just keeping our wash clean on a scrub board. But, uh, yeah, I've thought a lot about those settlers, you know, with little children around, and boy, it must have been difficult. Or maybe it just came to boil too quick this time, and it was too hard in the jars. These ones seem okay. Frustrating? Yeah, it is, just for four jars. It's kind of a whole day thing. I'd like to be up there working and I have to hang around here to keep the wood in the stove. And now with these, I gotta empty the water and start all over again. Meanwhile, the pioneers have made a deal with one of the neighbors. They'll cut firewood for him next winter if he cuts their wild hay crop this summer. The deal with Stuart Surrett guarantees them enough winter feed for the animals. Some of the things are made uh, in a later date, but the, the basic mower principle is exactly the same as when it first came out. And that's the, that's the area we were, we were looking at. We wanted to make sure that it was period appropriate, and, and this one is as close as we can come to it. And um, so we're going to strike up the deal. As I'm doing this, I don't know about you, Tim, but I'm sure thinking about settlers back then. I mean, how many acres is this? This is only, what, three acres? We've got 40 to do. First time I've ever done this. But I'm loving it, yeah. Yeah, this is what the prairie is about for me. <laughs> Jeff, up! The first day I feel like a settler. Yeah. <laughs> it's neat. This is this is kind of a experience I was looking forward to when we thought of pioneering. This is fun. This is pioneering. I love it. <laughs> it turns out the neighbors love this too, especially the Hutterites, who are reminded of their own pioneer beginnings. They bring generations of experience with them when they come to visit, and some of it is priceless. Here, a Hutterite elder remembers how to build a traditional haystack so it will shed the rain. You keep working the perimeter so it doesn't all just slide down. You gotta firm it up the outside and keep pecking it down to get a foundation going. Equipped with the wisdom of their farming elders, the pioneers go on alone. They'll spend the next few weeks gathering hay for the animals. The old timers have told them they'll need 10 tons of it for the winter. They decide, just to be safe, they'll put up 12. The rows are raked by hand. The hay loaded into the wagon, stamped and packed, and then transferred to the haystack back at the homestead. The work is monotonous, but satisfying. And the load seems lighter when they're working as a team. It's our 31st load. Well, we have another 20 loads, I think. Finish that few of all. Ah, ah, ah. How are you looking moving in here? Yeah. Doubly looking forward to it because we know that when we do move in, our boys will be here right away. So that uh, gives us much, much incentive. Yeah. It's kind of nice also for the 
personal side of your marriage, too, to have the privacy. Yeah, so we can talk and have a good talk together. <laughs> what, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, what are you talking about, Andy? <laughs> Don't embarrass me now. <laughs> about uh, sex, that's what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, oh, sex. Oh. That's, that's, you know... How have you handled that? Well, for myself, it's been interesting because <laughs> I thought it would be, you know... We've just been really so tired <laughs> that it uh, it hasn't been something that's uh, a lot less frequent here than back home. <laughs> just, Our boys are listening to this. Oh, that's true, too. You're going to be so embarrassed. But there's just been so much workload that uh, we go get into our tent. We're just plain bushed. Too tired for anything except sleep. We have had sex. In the long evenings of August, Frank and Alana put the finishing touches to their house. For a time, they're alone together, sharing the work and working out who's boss. Well, look. Oh, that! I was thinking the wind that either oh. end. <laughs> Down the way. <laughs> yes, yeah. No, not that, no, you, you already put one in here. Yeah. So you don't need to put another one in that one. But it's a big one. No, it's not. That's right. a big one. This is a medium. No, no, no. Now, up here. Don't uh, talk to me uh, like that. <laughs> I keep my fingers away. You look like you made me screw that one up. Yeah, look at this. See this overhang? Remember we talked about that? So I was too busy in trouble for other things. So do they teach roofing in nursing school? Oh, apparently not. Just in man school. Apparently that's the only way you can do it right. <laughs> How easy is a foreman? Oh, my love for him goes deeper every second up here. <laughs> We've had some, uh, the wind has been really hitting the tar paper and with the sun it's really been flexing. And uh, we've actually got a hole over on the other side. So um, I don't think it would have lasted. And it turns out it only cost us in, in 1875 to shingle both roofs only cost $3. You know, a box of matches cost us 35 cents and to shingle this roof cost a dollar. Like for us it was three dollars and for the film company to buy all the shingles in real today money was like thirteen hundred and sixty dollars or something, so. Meanwhile, work continues on Tim and Deanna's house. They use their settler cam to record the Hutterite youngsters who have become regular visitors. The colony elders approve, hoping that their young people will discover something from their own past here. My ways, my child, are not your ways. My thoughts are higher than none. Let me lead you each step of this long, weary day. Let me bless thy trembling and in Annabelle is pregnant and due any day. Frank is rushing to get a home ready for this addition to the Pioneer family. What are you doing here, Frank? Uh, working on the barn. We're uh, bringing the walls up higher so that uh, we'll be able to get it all finished off. Except I have the pig eating my feet on this side and she eats me when I'm down there. I think I'm dinner, I think. Why moss? We don't have internet here. We don't have an encyclopedia here. We don't have a homesteader book here. But Tim thinks it has a better R factor than would uh, the clay and straw. And also, it's uh, it'll ex obviously these logs aren't dry yet. And once we get that wood stove going on inside, these logs are going to shrink. And he feels that uh, this moss might expand easier, or it will fit into the you know fit into the cracks easier than, than uh, clay will, which is obviously in, in the land and Frank's house already is falling out in places. And also in winter, if it does fall out, we have, we're going to have moths and burlap bags and uh, be able to refill. How do you get it? From the swamp over here. Do you have to have dig it out of the ground or where does it come oh, from? Oh, at first I did. Ooh, putting my hands underneath that swamp and lifting it up and not knowing if there's a snake or a mouse or anything underneath there. Um, 
but uh, now I have a rake and that's working a lot better. It's going to be a big weekend on the homestead. Tomorrow, the Treadway's three sons are coming for a visit. Tim and Deanna will finish their cabin just in time. Outside, they're making everything shipshape. But with the miracle rake, you can do it all. And for only three easy payments in 1995, it can be yours. No they're looking forward to showing off the good things they've done here. But hardships and danger are always near. In fact, disaster is about to strike. Just a spark, eh? Is that still on fire up top? Yeah. A hot wind relights an old smudge fire. The dry grass and old straw act like a wick, and in a moment the barn is ablaze. There's no escape for Annabelle. They try everything to comfort her, and then they send for the vet, hoping he can save her. Relax. 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 So it burned all here first, yeah. did it? Look, it traveled right along there. And then I guess it, it lit the hay and went up there. And on the hay. She's putting uh, mud on her. Uh, water, mud to try and put it on her. And yeah, and it's keeping the bugs off her. Uh, the vet's on his way right now. She's having problems walking. Her, her back, one back foot is badly burnt. Uh, flames are probably 20 feet up in the air here. And then we were, I was working up at the house, and Deanna was in the working over there, and De Frank and Lana were over there, and Deanna heard the hoof of the smoke of the flames, I guess, just igniting. And then uh, the pig started squealing, and we all came running. We just had our, our two pails of drinking water, and um, there's, well our wells are totally dry. All of them? This one down here. Uh, so we had to run up to our house, which is quite a ways away for when you think of a fire, you know, to come with two pails of water to douse on a, you know, a flames that are 20 feet high. It's a pretty useless feeling. Well, we, that was another one of our fires from yesterday, and we thought we better just kind of stoke it up and make sure it was out. And now we spread it out. We haven't used it since yesterday afternoon around 3. And obviously that's how hot it was, it's catching fire again. Was it smoking at all? No, there's been no smoke since yesterday. So that's really scary. It shows us how dry things are, and I think we're going to be a little paranoid around here from now on. Because uh, the area involved and, and the nature of the burns, I mean, it's not a feasible thing to treat. In any case, uh, whether the decision is to consume or just to uh, not consume, I mean, it's, the crux of the matter is this uh, flower is in very good shape, and I think she consideration should be given to put her out of her misery. Let's go get the horse. I'm not sure what a settler would have done. Just to, to put up a pig is a, it's a lot of work. We don't even have, we maybe have two jars we can use and we don't have the salt here and our next pickup isn't till Wednesday. We're not set up at all for it. No. We're not set up for butchering a pig. The pioneers are defeated. They decide to haul Annabelle away and bury her. Oh, that's gone a little okay. rusty. What is it was supposed to be a day to celebrate. Tim and Deanna are moving out of the tent and into their house. 
How long have you been in that tent? We were in that tent 11 weeks. The longest I've ever spent in a tent in my life. Probably the crappiest tent you've ever spent in in your life. Are you going to miss it? Negatory. <laughs> but the memory of the afternoon hangs over the camp like a cloud. By nightfall, they will be in their houses, alone with their thoughts of this day. It will be remembered as one of the worst. What a day, like, oh. You know, we were just thinking today it's going really nicely. Tim and Deanna, we're, we're going to move in today. Their boys are coming Friday, so that's why we're doing all this cleanup, which ended up starting the fire. You know, and then we felt like crap because we had started the fire yesterday, and so, of course, all day today we're saying, you know, if we only would have thrown water on it, although it didn't seem like there was anything to throw water on, but if we only would have been more careful, we wouldn't have had a pig in pain. And I just, I hate even the smell of smoke now, and it's so funny. I didn't think it would bother me that much, but normally I love the smell of a fire. I went out tonight and I just about gagged because Tim and Deanna have a fire going over there and you can smell the smudge coming through. Because now I just see and smell burnt pig when I smell a fire, so hopefully that goes I think it nightmares, the sound of that pig tonight. Just screaming forever, it was terrible. <laughs> this is the moment Deanna's been waiting for. The pioneers are allowed two brief visits with family during the year. Did you open that up, you brat? <laughs> oh, man. Look at you, you look like a hippie! Look at you! <laughs> oh, man. How you doing, Mom? Good now. Yeah. Good, Papa? <laughs> Looking good. The Treadway's three sons will stay for the weekend. It will be precious time together. Time to show off the rewards that come from 11 weeks of hard work. Nice to meet you guys. I can't believe how nice this place is, Papa. Yeah? I can see you living here forever. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, not this lady. <laughs> Our little dirty and empty. Ah. Who made the jars? Oh, the neighbors gave us the, that was a housewarming present. This is where our kitchen's gonna be, eh? Uh-huh. That's oh, yeah. what this is, yeah. Mm. Nice flowers and everything. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Dorado. Oh, dear, she's trying to get back in so for some reason. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> there, now the whole family's here. Yeah. <laughs> Trampoline. Oh, you're gonna have, be itchy. You're going to have lots of itching today, boy. We'll get you packing. <laughs> I'll tell you, my legs were so sore. One day I said to the kids, to Alan and Frank and Deanna, I said, somebody's gonna have to pack because my legs will not move. I was, they just wouldn't move anymore. So what do you guys think of everything? It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. pretty surprised how, uh, how nice the places look for sure. And all these places are awesome. Mm -hmm. Pioneers, eh? What do you think of that? Oh, that's it. <laughs> it's not bad, it's fun. But the bugs were the worst at the beginning, so the bugs aren't yeah. that bad now. You can go yeah, in the bush and there's no bugs. Don't bite at all. Yes. No. And the mosquitoes, there's no mosquitoes now. So. Good job, Davy. Good job, Danny. Yeah, the dearest thing in my life are these kids. I, was, I wasn't complete here without my kids, you know? At least one of them around us. And, uh, I was dreading the empty nest syndrome, which was coming in a couple of years, and I'm getting it early. <laughs> I got an empty nest, and it's... Uh, and seeing the dog, too, this is my best friend here, one of my best friends, anyhow. And uh, it's really good, really good. I just feel complete, you know? The Treadway boys have been running the family construction business while their parents have been battling the elements on the homestead. It's time to celebrate their accomplishments together while they can. <laughs> You're not doing this alone. <laughs> what do you mean? Just at home taking care of the business and paying all their bills. 
mowing the lawn, doing the dishes, gardening, taking care of David, laundry. Yeah. One of the things that that we're, is a theme of the show is about separation, and that those, if you think back to the settlers, never see the family yeah. again. Mm -hmm. Must have well, been terrible. Yeah. No mail. I know back then you had to pay for your own letters, and I read a story of a person having to go to the store and and they just looked at the letter and they, they picked up the letter at the general store, felt it, smelled it, and gave it back to the general store owner because it cost them 40 cents to get that letter from their family and they didn't have 40 cents to take it. So, you know, I think the loneliness for the first settlers was far greater than we've ever experienced. Lift up your little head. The cook stove arrives, and the treadways take advantage of three strong backs to move it to the house. This visit has become a weekend of working together. The truth is, homesteaders enjoyed few, if any, such luxuries in the 1870s. Many immigrants left home and never saw their families again. This visit eases the burden of loneliness for these pioneers, who have dropped in from the 21st century and who can never truly leave their modern life behind. I'm the brains of this operation. <laughs> Trimming a style. You betcha. Yeah. I'll have to give you a trim when you get home. You betcha. Love you, son. Love you too. You want to know how settlers managed when they were saying goodbye to their families, and I'm sure it was just like this. One of the hardest times in their life. Not knowing they'd see their loved ones for a long time. I'm feeling good today. I, I'm not too bad at all. I thought I would. I thought I was going to have a rougher time than I am having, but uh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm not having such a good time. No? Why don't you uh, tell us about it? It's not easy. I'm not doing good. It's, it was real hard saying goodbye last night. Thank goodness we slept okay. And I didn't wake up thinking about them or dreaming about them, but it's just so lonely here without them. It's just so lonely. August is ending, and the footage from the Pioneer's camera reveals how much they've become a part of the community. In the country, hospitality and help are given freely. For Deanna, the visitors substitute for family. Well, Charlie, what are you drinking? I'm drinking coffee from your new stove. Yeah, we got some help here from the neighbor boys just before they're going back to school. Came over and asked what they could do to help. This is Stanley. But what's working for Deanna may not be good for recreating history. The visiting seems to be out of control. The production team sees the tapes and begins to worry that all the pioneers' courage and hard work are being compromised by the growing number of visitors. Because the settler world is fragile and the advance of the 21st century onto the site is relentless. Do you and Deanna feel like we're their police out here? And we feel like not everything out here is period appropriate, so it bothers us because we want to do it right. And um, then they feel like we're policing them by always saying stuff. So and I think we have a different, a different, a um, different. We have a different. What do you call it? Uh, view. View of what's right. I think is, is one of the, the huge problems. It's stupid with us all walking around completely miserable. Yeah, all four of us hate being here. And it's Only ridiculous. because we don't like being around each other. Yeah, and, and it's... And They'd it's, love it if we left. We'd be happier if they left, and we've all admitted it. Yeah, and, it, and it's... You know, it's... There's no way to live. Michael Scott is the show's producer. He arrives at the site and reluctantly confronts the pioneers with the problem. I would like to have a free discussion with you about our concerns, certainly. Um, that the routine of life here is being compromised by the number of visits that, of people. I want your suggestions as to how we're going to deal with this. Mm -hmm. 
Anybody want to say something? It was my understanding that, yes, we could visit our neighbors, and we could go to church on Sunday, and I could bring my Bible. And that's what I came in on. Mm -hmm. And yes, yes, I think that we should curtail it. But I do think that settlers back then did visit each other, farmers visit each other and, um, for advice. Sure, people visited. And that was but, it was not, but it was not a weekly or daily th occurrence. No. It wasn't, you know. I guess what you're saying is you want us to cut off of them other than on Sunday. And for me, that's hard. That's really hard. To be honest, today, yesterday, Tim and I said, this is it. Let's pack this in. What are we doing this for? It is so hard here. It is hard here with us, us four getting along. I don't have a friend over here. I wish I did, but I don't. And I need friends. That's the kind of person I am. And I knew that that's what was going to be hard for me. Well, Timmy, I know you're, you're never going to probably believe this, but I know you guys are really nice, great people, and um, every resentment, literally, and every problem I've had with you guys out here, every single thing that's bothered me, and the neighbor things, even when I bring it up, and you guys think it's personal reasons. I'm a bit of a perfectionist, and I came out here, and I wanted to do this exactly right. I wanted to be half-starving in the winter if we needed to be, to feel like it, and every day it bothers me, and puts me in a bad mood, when I never personally feel like a settler. I don't out here. And I, I know we've been fighting constantly, all of us lately, and it's exhausting, and I'm tired of it. Compromises have to be made by everybody. It's part of the hell of this project, you know. And we, you all recognized that when we started talking, and in all the interviews, you all talked about, this is going to be a nightmare in many ways. And we recognize that it is in many ways. I mean, you were all mm -hmm. dedicated to the idea of, of homesteading, trying it out. And have you lost that sense of a purpose? The last week we have, the last week we said, who cares anymore? <clears throat> the last week we've been feeling like that, I think. There's a lot of people who uh, want you to succeed, I think, out there because, it, you know, they, they want the 21st century to share and understand what a sacrifice is, what the commitment was that people had to make in, in, in that 19th century journey. And you're their last chance, many of them, to, to live that out, to see that lived out, and to see people understand what's going on. And uh, there's a purpose, certainly, for what you're doing. I think what we need to do, I think we have to realize that um, you know, we're, we're two couples. To stranger couples, and I think we have to realize that we're we're not going to be perfect friends. And why? We 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 it's see. It's time to stop trying to do that. Obviously. I think what we need to do. I think we need to start um, trying to be, trying to be civil with each other, and trying to be. I don't know. Trying to act like neighbors instead of trying to act like a family type of thing. And then is, being disappointed when it's not. Yeah. And instead, maybe we should just say, hey, we're not put our people. sights so high. I think. There is agreement that visiting will be limited, as it would have been in settler times. The pioneers set aside their differences for now, because summer here has always been a fleeting pleasure. Winter is certain to be cold and dark. There's food and fuel to gather, and common ground to be found in simply working hard, together. Next time on Pioneer Quest, How many you want? the pioneers start work on a new barn. Hunting season gets underway. And Old Man Winter arrives with a bang. He 
it's wonderful, it's marvelous. No debt, no bills, no worries for a year. But when you get used to it, and you're really used to it, your optimism <laughs> is taken over by fear. You get used to it. You get used to it. The absence of bug repellents, you'll get used to it. Grab a few leaves to wipe your bum. Just listen to those mosquitoes hum. You can't take a walk for a romantic talk. It's wonderful. It's marvelous. They keep us company wherever we go. But when you get used to them, and you're really used to them, they suddenly disappear before the snow.